When you start living with the end in mind, everything starts to change. What are people gonna say about you? What message is your life gonna speak when you're long gone? Cause you weren't born by accident. You didn't just happen to be where you're at and happen to watch this video. There is always a reason. Welcome to our Fuse Life podcast, episode 90. Uh, we're all about God-given assignment, heaven meeting earth in and through you. And uh, my guest today is doing that in her lane. I'm super excited to have this conversation uh, with Jackie. Jackie's been involved in a lot of things. And uh, God has transitioned her into a space that I think is very, very important. And I'm really, really excited. So Jackie, thank you so much for making time and being with us today. Thanks so much. I'm really excited too. This is going to be super fun. Yeah. So just for those that don't know you, can you maybe just share a little bit about what you do currently and um, all the things you're involved in? Yeah, sure. I'm Jackie Dorman. I live in Austin, Texas. So I see some Texas folks on here. So hey, y'all, I brought my cup <laughs> just for you. Um, I'm actually transplanted from the Midwest. So I moved here from Columbus, Ohio about three years ago. And so I live with my husband, David. You'll hear a little bit more about him. We were next door neighbors. We got married 15 years ago. Yes, I married my neighbor. And so him and I, we do ministry and business together. It's an exciting life. We have three grown children and a new son-in-law. Our middle daughter just got married. I have a grand dog named Ziggy, who's six months old, golden retriever. Um, wow. I am an author of an amazing book, but it's not just a book. It is a protocol from heaven called the heart work and i'm the creator of something called married in 12 months or less and it is uh about reclaiming your love life healing your heart and finding your spirit mate and so that is what i'm currently up to i have thousands of students all over the world and i have currently helped hundreds of kingdom singles come into amazing uh, marriage-minded, relationship, engagement, and even marriage. In, in fact, since um, Valentine's Day of this year, even during pandemic and quarantine, a lot of places still locked down, we've had over uh, 30 engagements and marriages just in the last six wow. months. So wow. super, cool. super cool stuff. Come on. So we're yes. going to dive into some of that. This is going to be great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and those of you guys that are on here that have questions, if you just wait for about 20, 30 minutes and then start putting them on, that'd be great. So Jackie, before we go into that, normally I like to get a bit of a background of how somebody you know got to where they got. Like, Are there any parts of your life that you feel are maybe highlighted that you want to share with people on how you got here to this point? You know, I just, when you look at my trajectory, it's like, it doesn't make any sense. There's no sense to be made of the trajectory of how I got here, except I've always been the wing woman. So ever since I was a little kid, I loved love. I'm the person that you would send with a note in class, like, hey, does he like me? Send the note. Like I would be, <laughs> I'm that person that would always be carrying the note or asking, you know, do you, you know, do you want to go with this person? And so in my private life, I have helped 15 different marriages come together just in my private life. And so I have always known that it's kind of a gift of mine. Mm -hmm. um, but I did grow up in a very broken home. My mom was married three times before I was even 10 years old. And all mm -hmm. of those marriages were very tumultuous, very dysfunctional. I actually left home early in my teen years at 14 years old to live in a girl's home, foster care. And so it's so ironic that God would choose me to be like the poster child for kingdom marriage and family. Like I would be the least the least likely, right? Doesn't God love the least likely? Um, the least likely, the not the usual suspect. You know, I didn't come from this, you know, amazing home life. I didn't mm. have good modeling. Uh, in fact, I like to say that I came out of my mother's womb like a National Geographic documentary, like running for my life. You know how the baby's <laughs> born and then it immediately just has to start running for its life. Like that yeah, is yeah. what, that's my life. And so wow. it just, it's so um, just supernatural that God has allowed me to carry this part of the kingdom. Um, and, and it's been super exciting. So um, I don't know how much you want, but you know, after that, after that crazy tumultuous childhood, I actually had a massive conversion experience when I was 22. So I was driving my car and someone had been talking to me about Jesus. And I thought that sounded like a fun little fairy tale. 
And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, God, is he real? I don't know, kind of thing. I was two years into a very, very broken marriage because mm. obviously with that kind of background, you're you're not you, you shouldn't be getting married to anyone, right? You don't have any good mm. information at all. And so I raced past all the red flags of my first uh, engagement, you know, to that altar, more red flags than the Daytona 500. And I married <laughs> that guy. And then mm. two, two years in, it was, we were already separated. It was just a mess. And I was driving my car and I was thinking about the, the things that this person had said to me. So you people out there that love to, you know, ask people if they know Jesus and those kind of things, keep going with that because it actually works. Even if like when they're in, in person with you, they're like, whatever, get away. Mm. And mm. I was driving and I saw myself in the rear view mirror, Joseph. Like I didn't just see myself. I saw myself. Like it was like, whoa, I saw myself and I like had like a hippie, trippy experience. And I just said to God, you know, if you're real, what do you want me to do? And I passed out. I passed wow. out driving my car in the city on a busy street. And the next thing I know, I'm in the emergency room, not a scratch on me. There's not a scratch on my car. And that was the beginning of a massive awakening experience that never stopped. And now we're almost 25 years into just a crazy adventure with Jesus. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, before we go even further, I mean, there's a couple of things you mentioned. So we are all about, you know, God assignment and how God uses your life's training. But then he also puts you in places where you feel least qualified. So it's quite interesting, some of the things that you've said. Um, <laughs> did you have any kind of pedigree, like your grandparents or anyone that walked with the Lord or anything like that or nothing? You know, I've been talking about this a lot with my kids and my husband. Obviously, in my lineage, there's friends of God, you know, mm. and my grandmother on my mother's side was a friend of God. You know, mm. she was. And then I think even further back, like all of us, even though even if we can't chart it, you know, the, the blessings are visiting on a thousand generations, right? And so mm -hmm. there definitely was that upon my life, even though I didn't experience it. You know, so many families have, um, you know, those blessings are covered up by so much dysfunction that they don't really know that, you know, that they're there and that they're available. And that's really mm -hmm. part of why I do what I do, because I want people to be able to grab a hold. I feel like I'm a kinsman redeemer that helps people grab a hold of that lineage and legacy that's always just been there waiting for them all along. Mm -hmm. So um, so definitely I have those people um, in in my in my family line. Um, for sure. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So before we go fully into what you're doing now, can you touch on a little bit on the things that you've done on the way? Like you've, you know, <laughs> from our conversation, you've done so many things and some yeah. very big things. Any, any particular ones that you want to touch on? Yeah. I just, you know, after, after that experience in the car that I told you guys about, I was just all in, I was like, all right, you have my attention. Uh, what do you want to do? And so because of that, without any type of formal Bible school training or anything, we're talking about the, you know, the mid nineties here, uh, God and I just went on an adventure. I would wake up in the morning and he'd say, go here and do this. And I would. And one time, one day he's like, Hey, go here and work at this daycare. And I was like, okay, God, this is where, this is where my obedience to you is probably going to run into a speed bump. Cause at the time, like working with little kids sounded like a really terrible thing <laughs> a terrible thing you know i was 22 years old and i was like i don't even want kids let alone work with other people's kids but i was obedient to that and after a few months at this daycare uh i went out it was in a really really kind of sketchy place and i went out in the alley to go to my car and there was a a trafficked woman standing out in the alley and mm. God said, hey, go up to her and talk to her and tell her that you work here at this building and that if she needs anything during the week that she can come to you. And that started an amazing ministry to trafficked women because not only did she come, but she brought every other trafficked woman in that neighborhood. Pretty soon I'm wow. giving them clothes and food and I'm visiting them in prison and I'm showing up to crack houses and, and helping people to you know get transitioned. And this was back before that kind of ministry really was a thing in the yeah. 90s. And um, so I went, I ended up going to school for social work as a result of that ministry and that trajectory. And then wow. when I was in the middle of that social working um, 
it's just, like I said, this is my, my trajectory is so bizarre, but in the middle of that social working trajectory, uh, the, the pastor of the church that I was at and being discipled at, he actually went to prison, Joseph, like out mm. of nowhere, <laughs> mm. out of nowhere, this whole thing happened. And so then I found myself kind of like a ship without a harbor and God's like, Hey, you know what we're going to do now? We're going to go into television. And so I went from social work into TV. I became the general manager of a television network, very supernaturally, wow. just like this yeah. story. And, um, and that, that has led me to where I am now. I've been doing women's media, especially um, women's media for oppressed women, women that are addicted, mentally ill, women that um, have been divorced, that are suffering from all different types of, you know, crisis and all, you know, the media for them. Um, and that has just led, you know, up, 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 up to, uh, to the heart work, which is what my book is all about. Mm, wow. So yeah. just as we keep transitioning, I mean, there seems to be a radical obedience in how you do things. For Can sure. you touch on that a little bit? Because I think a lot of people get stuck on that. Like they know God's leading them somewhere or telling them to do something, but getting stuck in that space. What are your thoughts on radical obedience and just going for it? You know, the, the thing that you have to do is you have to not invite your, your human reasoning to the table of discussion. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I've learned to do is that, you know, when God said television to me, I had never, I hadn't owned a TV ever. I'd never owned a TV. I didn't have a TV. Wow. And so I was like, okay, um, you want me to go into TV, but I know nothing about it. So I believe in putting feet on things really fast. You know, mm. I'm a throat against the wall, see if it sticks. You know, a lot of people have a hard time with, you know, a word from God because they will sit and they will want him to prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it before they'll even mm. take one step towards it. Mm. I'm the exact opposite. I know that I'll start driving fast and, and he can, and he can redirect if he wants to, because I'm going to take him seriously. And so I immediately picked up the phone after he said, will you? I said, yes. And then I picked up the phone and I called every TV station in the city and said, hey, can I be an intern here? I have no education. I have no experience. I'll do it for free. I'll come in wow. and turn. And, you know, the place that I got the job as general manager was actually the TV station that um, that brought me in as an intern. Mm -hmm. And so um, so just, you know, just taking it seriously. I think a lot of times we treat we treat the voice of God as a hypothetical instead mm -hmm. of you know it's a possibility instead of a probability and so if we begin to take it seriously even if you do it wrong do it because mm -hmm. god's not afraid of you doing it wrong you know faith without works is dead you know jump in jump mm -hmm. in he's he's pleased with that he's pleased with imperfect action and i don't think people know that yeah i mean this, these are things we talk about like i talk about all the time here so it's so good to hear another story that has proof of this you know <laughs> yeah um, it's proof i i'd love to know some of your thoughts on if there are times where maybe you did something and it wasn't quite right if god still turned that around do you have any stories like that i mean we don't have to go down there but every story every single story that's what's so beautiful about it is that you know if you you know, I, I never did the exact thing that, you know, and I never even I never even saw the big picture. I was just willing to take the steps, sometimes big steps, sometimes little steps. I mean, when I worked in television, um, I had a project called Jane TV. It was the first online protocol TV network for women that did not exist. You know, it was nominated for wow. visionary awards. It became a big deal in the Midwest, you know, newspaper articles and magazine spreads and you name it. It looked like, wow. And it was this media hub that was gonna serve women and every woman and it was incredible. And it was the new feminist movement and just fell flat on my face. Mm. Like the rug just got completely pulled out from under me. I had over a hundred people working on that project from all over the world. It was so successful in beta and then it just didn't manifest. And I think what happens when this kind of stuff happens in our life, we're like, oh, I missed it. That must have been me and my own strength. That probably wasn't God. We say all this real religious churchy stuff to ourselves. But what we mm. don't understand is that failure is not the opposite of success. It is part of success. Mm. And the character that was produced in me during that time is the same character that allows me to do what I do now. That failure mm. was important because it didn't steal my potential and it will, you know, it doesn't steal potential. 
but it does steal confidence. But mm. you know, but I had to lean in even more out of my giftings and into that calling, into that destiny DNA, out of my gifting and into that supernatural power of partnership with heaven. Mm. And the more that I learned how to do that, um, and I wouldn't have learned how to do that because if that if that TV project would have succeeded, um, I probably would be a quite a different person sitting in front of you right now. So wow. it really, it shaped me, that failure molded me and it created the character that can now steward what's happening in my life today. Yeah, man, everything you're saying, there's so much synergy. I'm getting so excited. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you do all these things and then you have the rug pulled out. And now how did you end up writing this book on, on the heart? I mean, we all know the heart's the most important part, right? So how, how did you end up in that spot? Well, you know, the roosters came home to roost. And what I mean by that is that I had that conversion experience at 22. It was amazing. But all of those, all those demons from my childhood, all of those lies I believed, those things were neatly compartmentalized away. And, you know, they weren't triggered yet. They weren't coming up in the form mm -hmm. of identity crisis, in the form of rejection and uh, abandonment and all the things that were just lurking, lurking, lurking. And this mm -hmm. is why so many people, they'll go to, to church for years and years and years, and their lives will still just be tore up from the floor up, okay? They'll be mm -hmm. on the hot, you know, the, the, you know, the hot mess express because it doesn't mm -hmm. get from here. It's a lot of scripture and information, but it never gets here because mm. the heart is already full of all kinds of other things yeah you know, all kinds of narratives and stories and different things and so when that specifically when that failure happened um i had a nervous breakdown and it wasn't my first nervous breakdown i had had a nervous breakdown before i met jesus but this was my first post jesus nervous breakdown because don't we tell people that you know you know jesus everything's better now mm. you know you know, mm. you're not, you're not going to, nothing like that's ever going to happen to you again. And it's just not true mm. because, you know, whatever's in is going to have to come out <laughs> eventually. Mm. Yeah. And so, um, and so that happened and, you know, it was during that process of really healing, you know, those deep, deep, deep places, um, that this protocol was birthed. I was its first student. Mm. I was the HeartWorks first student and it massively transformed my life. I no longer believed that God loved me. I believed that God loved me and it mm. shifted everything. It shifted the place from which I ministered to others. It shifted how I treated my family and myself. It shifted every single thing in my life changed when I knew that his love for me was not based at all on any performance. Mm. Any. Yeah. Come that on. there was no, there's no threat of abandonment. You know, people will become their real selves when fear is removed from the equation. Mm. Okay. And so when perfect love in its perfect state, which has nothing to do with you, mm. love in its perfect state is you're not involved in the equation. It doesn't have mm. anything to do with you. You can't earn it. You can't merit it. You can't deserve it. When you receive that type of perfection in love, um, you just do things completely different because it's coming from a different place that doesn't involve you. Mm. It's not about you. Yeah. And it's, it's life changing. It really is. Yeah. Well, yeah. I do this thing uh, called the love seat and we talk exactly about that. You know, you're sitting in this chair where you did nothing to get in there. You can't, you, you can't do anything to get out of there. Uh, love begins with God, ends with God, you know, and you get to be a part of that union, that seamless union. Love it. So, so then you end up writing a book. Had you ever written a book before? Did you have thoughts around there? Like you're becoming an author? Yeah. So I taught the heart work as a workshop for over 10 years. Hmm. So I taught it as a workshop for over 10 years um, because of my TV background and because of the success of Jane TV and beta, I became hmm. a media consultant. People hired me for my ideas, for my pioneering spirit and ideas for their brands. I've worked for some of the biggest thought leaders in the kingdom, you know, behind the scenes. I've helped mm. them go digital, especially. I've helped everyone during that digital conversion back in the day. Um, wow. That was kind of my bread and butter. And I was teaching, you know, I was using all of the tips and tricks that I was giving my clients. I would try them out myself. But, you know, like so many people out there, I was like, okay, yeah, these are the thought leaders. These are the people that are on camera. I'm behind the camera. I'm behind mm. here, but I had such an incredible voice that God wanted to use, but I'm just, you know, I'm back here. I'm going to mm. do this. 
I have all these great ideas and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make your brands successful. Um, and then one day when Periscope came out, do you remember Periscope? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm teaching all these private workshops and I'm using things that, you know, what I tell my client, I've, I've been using Facebook groups to teach workshops from the beginning of Facebook groups. So back in mm. 2015, 2016, but mm. it's all private, right? It's not public. And mm. so when Periscope came out, I had to try it out for my clients because I try everything out first. And man, that first live, because, you know, live streaming wasn't a thing like yep. that. I was hooked, man. I was like, I love this. Yeah. I'm a, I'm here. This is where I'm meant to be. And I just like mm. something inside of me came alive. And mm. so I started teaching all the things that I've been doing behind closed doors. I started teaching on Periscope myself and I wow. called it. And I called it the wake up call with Jackie cool. and pretty soon I had thousands of live viewers and all kinds of people were joining my heart workshop and mm. it just started exploding from there. As soon as I was willing to like kind of put my face out there that was when everything just started to like kind of skyrocket. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so how long ago was this now? How many years would you say? Uh, five years. Five years. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then, so then how do you go from there now to this matchmaking place? Like, well, how did you end up? The book came out first and the way the book came out is that, you know, like a lot of people, I was just like, you know, I don't think that I have the attention span to write a book, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, even if you scribble in your journal, I mean, writing a book is, is something. Okay. Mm. And so I was like, ugh, I felt, I felt, you know, that invitation to write the book, I said to God, I said, you know what? I said, I've got to keep my day job. I don't have time to write a book. And he said, money's not your problem, Jackie. I want you to cancel everything, wow. everything and write this book. That was mm. January. That was January, um, 2019. And so of course, wow. no one, no one knew what was about to happen. Right. Quarantine mm. and COVID and all that, mm. that wasn't even on the horizon. So from January to March, I wrote this book in 13 weeks. And the flow was there, you know, people, people need to realize that when you partner with that, that, you know, um, if you take that, that invitation seriously, right at that moment, you have that supernatural wind in your sails, right? To do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that it was easy, but it was definitely worth it. And so I did that. I canceled everything else. And do you know, on the 12th week, it was published. I self published it on the 13th week. Um, on the 12th re week, I got a phone call from a family member that said, Hey, you know, I don't know if you know this, but you, you know, you, you know, your grandpa on your dad's side left you an inheritance when he died 16 years ago. And you know, it, you, you don't have it. So we need to get it to you. So wow. all of all the money that I missed out on, you know, just like wow. making from all of the, you know, things that I had going on for those three months that all came back to me in that like wow. mysterious 16 year old <laughs> inheritance. <Yeah. laughs> and I'm wow. not saying that that happens for everyone, but it was really incredible that that happened. And once that book was out there because quarantine was coming, because COVID was coming, it just mm. really, really, a lot of people had time to sit down and read it. They had time to do their heart work. It was like that forced sabbatical on the entire earth where everyone's mm. like, you know what? I should take this time to really maybe <laughs> tune, yeah. tu tune into something else. Right. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, yeah. It was really <laughs> incredible. It was really incredible. And so during that time, my mother uh, got very seriously ill and she passed away um, in February mm. of 2021. And oh right after I got home from the ICU where she passed away, she actually passed away of COVID. Mm. Um, right when I got home from that, um, God just spoke to me and he said, Hey, he said, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's sit down and write the list of the top 10 things that you've helped women do over the last 20 years with the heart work. Mm. And, um, I said, okay, so I made a top 10 list of things that people that I had discipled or ministered to or led in ministry, whether at the time it was called wow women, or it was called heart work, or it was called wake up call with Jackie. It was all the heart work that I was teaching that whole time. Mm. And the, like the third thing on the list was they get married. Mm. And like I said, you know, if you're single and you come into proximity to me, I'm going to try to fix you up <laughs> always. <laughs> 
All the you know? ladies said, amen. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're, we're better together. I believe that we were created for each other and everyone that has a desire to be married, I believe that that's a God-given desire. Yeah. And um, so, and we can get into that in a second, but um, so I was like, you want me to, you want me to make this into a brand? He said, yeah, I'm married in 12 months or less. I said, um, that's a, a pretty, a pretty crazy brand. And he said, mm. it's not a brand, it's a promise. Mm. He said, because if Come people on. will do their hard work, it doesn't have to take a long time. Wow. You know, if they get out of their own way and they get out of my way, I'll show them the love that's right in front of them. Wow. Come on. And, and so I put it out there. Everyone's locked down anyway. I mean, what do I have to lose? I like to throw things against the wall. So <laughs> I put it, I put it out there to my warm audience, my heart work, you know, and I just said, Hey, I said, I'm going to be teaching this. It's called Married in 12 Months or Less. You know, come on over if you want to do it. And I had a few dozen people take me up on that in March and April. And then I went ahead and I just ran a Facebook ad on it. And then just from then to now, it's just it, it's just exploded. It's just been crazy. Man, come on. So, I mean, there's so much we can go into now within this subject. Is there anything specifically yeah. that you want to go into? Well, people need to know that um, the things that I teach as far as matchmaking, I lived that. I, I married my next door neighbor. So, you know, after the after that church situation fell apart, that pastor went to prison, I went through just a crazy divorce. Um, and, you know, I during that nervous breakdown, at the least, the least likely, once again, the least likely place to find love in the middle of a nervous breakdown. In fact, when I met my husband for the first time, I yelled at him. I was like in a massive fear response. My hard work was not done. I walked out in my front yard. I had gotten an email that morning that a sex offender had moved into our neighborhood. <laughs> and this poor guy was moving in next door. So I just assumed oh. one and one together equals two. Wow. Man. So, you know, he's out sweeping his driveway, minding his own business. My five-year-old is running around the yard. You know, I didn't see her. She was out of sight. And then she came out of his garage with his little daughter. And I'm like, uh-uh, oh no. And I just went up to him. I was like, I know who you are. You know, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, but thank God another neighbor saw the exchange. And mm. the next day she said to me, hey, she said, I don't know what was going on there, but that guy's a really nice guy. He's, you know, he's a, a worship pastor at this church in town. I'm like, oh, I just felt smaller and smaller <laughs> yeah. and smaller. And so I apologized to him and we kind of began to co-parent. Like our kids went to the same summer program. So we would ride share and different things. And romance was definitely the last thing on my mind. Um, I'm sure it was the last thing on his mind as well. But um, when I find, when I realized, hey, you know, I think this guy likes me, I just, I just, right away, I was like, run, Forrest. Look, you need to run. I'm, I, I got issues. I'm having a nervous breakdown right now. I don't got time for this because I'm having a nervous breakdown. I cannot pencil you into this. Like, you know, I was just like, mm. I'm the last person in the world that you should want to fall in love with. But here's mm. the truth that a lot of people need to hear is that. 100% of our trauma comes from relationship with people. And that means that you cannot get the full healing, but just between you and God, mm -hmm. your healing has to involve people. So if you were hurt in marriage, you're going to be healed in marriage. If you were hurt in family, you're going to be healed in family. If you're wow. hurt in church community and spiritual community, you're going to be healed. So what we try to do is we try to avoid the thing that hurt us, not realizing that God will use that very thing to help heal us, mm -hmm. you know? He is the source, but he is also the head of the human resource department. And he will send mm. human resource to be part of that story of your healing. So a lot of people, Joseph, they will wait until they feel like they got it all together to allow God to be their matchmaker. And they're doing mm -hmm. it backwards because God will put people in your life, including romantic relationships, that help bring healing to those places that you're just not going to get there on your own. You're just mm. not. Mm. And, um, but you know, we, we believe all this psycho babble of, oh, that's codependency. Well, you know what? All of us are a little codependent. We have a codependent culture that we're living in, but it's called interdependency when God's mm. the author of it. When God's mm. the author of it, it's called interdependency. And so we have to remember that. Yeah. Wow. So right? good, man. Yeah, totally. And, um, I mentioned that I talk about the three different places, the codependency, but the, you know, total dependency 
and then the independency and in between is this narrow road of interdependency which we were created for so i mean i i love love what you're saying Hey guys, I just want to take a quick minute to tell you about our Royal Hybrids group coaching program. Over a year ago, the Lord started speaking to me about a group of people, a tribe that would only get their value, their affirmation, that would only get their identity from who they are in God and nothing else. And from that place, they were going to do great things on the earth. In the last year, we have seen a whole bunch of people jump into our program, solidify themselves in their identity with God, and from that place, actually start to engage their purpose. Fuse Life talks about the six trees, your spirit, your soul, your body, and then your relationships, your finances, and your purpose. We have seen a whole bunch of people come through this, get solidified in who they are, and then begin their own projects, whether it's a teen mom's project, whether it's a coaching counseling business, or a painting business, publishing your children's book, publishing a puzzle book. We have seen people do all of these kind of things and we just know that this is just the beginning. So you want to go to www.fusebornformore.com forward slash royal hybrids or just click the link in the caption and make sure to check out what we are doing. We would love to have you as part of our tribe. Now back to the podcast. Can we can we go into this a bit deeper now? So you know, one of the things that I've seen is uh, ladies that might feel like they've passed a date to be married or they're too old to be married. And everywhere they go, people are asking this question. And I bring up ladies because the majority of uh, the audience I work with, the people I work with are women. And they, they hear this repeatedly like, oh, are you, are you married yet? Are you married yet? Like your age. Can you speak to that? Because some of them now, it's almost scary for them to talk about it. They, they want to reject people because they know what's coming. That scenario. Can you speak into that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I love to speak into that. So first of all, you know, that's a lie. So let's just laugh at it. It's ridiculous. You know, there's no, <laughs> there's no expiration date. As long as you're live on the earth, anything and everything that God has for you can be yours. And so what I tell all of my students and clients is that if you have a desire to be married, then you can be married. You know, if you have a desire, you know, there's a lot of teachings in the Bible, uh, specifically the Pauline teachings that talk about singleness being mm. something that is um, something to attain to. But those those things are all out of context. You know, these were mm. these were letters that were written to persecuted people. Um, domestic right. life is not really smart for persecuted people. You know, <laughs> you know, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of stuff there. And I've met people that have this gift of singleness, and mm. they don't have any desire for family, right. like marriage, domestic domestic children, marriage, family. Yeah. I mean, obviously, everyone was created for community, so they have desire for community, but they're not crying in their pint of ice cream listening to Adele, wishing <laughs> yeah. that someone would love them. Okay? Totally. They're yeah. just not. And so, mm. what I, first of all, I want people to own that if I had the desire, God put it there, and he wants it for me more than I want it for myself. Mm. Because here's the biblical law of attraction, Joseph. What you believe, you will become, and what you become, you attract. So if mm. you continue to believe the lie that you're too old, then you're just too old. Because mm. you're going to project that, you believe it, and you're going to, that's what you're going to be putting out. It's just like, oh, my time has passed, my ship has sailed. Um, mm. And not just for marriage, but for all kinds of things. But if you believe and receive that age is a, is a construct of the curse, is a construct, it's not real, you're eternal, meaning that mm. the entire timeline that you're in this earth existence, you can be fruitful, you can prosper in every way, mm. in mm. financially, mentally, emotionally, physically, relationally. And so mm. if you believe that and you grab a hold of it, then you're never going to be too old or too young for anything. Mm. You know, you're going to be able to, you know, fulfill your full destiny without putting any kind of limitations on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Hey, I know a few of you listening now will have some questions. Start putting your questions in here and we'll go through some of them. But um, can you share some more things, some of the main blockages that you see people having when they come into the space, whether it's they've been through a marriage and it was really bad or they've never had the, the blessing of being married and they just can't see it happening. Can you speak to any, any parts of that that you feel are a common one, a common blockage? So for guys and girls, cause we, you know, we, we deal with men too. We have hundreds of men in our program. So um, they both kind of deal with the lies of 
really lies about God, self, men and women, marriage in general, cultural lies. There's all different types of things that become blocks. But I think one of the biggest lies is just not being enough, any version of not enough. For the guys, a lot of times it has to do with income and finances. It has to do with, you know, um, just, just feeling like they don't have much to offer. They don't have their mm. life together. A lot of men feel like they have to cross every T and dot every I before they even think about taking on a wife. And they don't realize that the wife, that easer, that beautiful gift that God said, it's not good for you to be without, is going to mm. help you to become what it is that God's called you to be and vice versa. In fact, I just heard a quote from a billionaire just recently that said, you know, how can you be successful? He said, forget about all the women, pick one woman and she will help you to become what God's created you to be and vice versa. And that's wow. super true because God's the one that said, you know, after he, after the sixth day of creation, he said, this isn't finished, this isn't complete. You know, my family needs to exist in community uh, male and female together, it's not good for the masculine to exist without that com that counterpart of the feminine. And so yeah. we're made for each other and we're better together. Uh, another lie that a lot of people believe is that, um, and, and it's there's three different folds of it. So culture, so let's talk about women for a second. Culture tells women, especially the modern culture, since the second wave feminism has told women that they shouldn't want this, that this is an archaic mm. desire. You shouldn't want it. You know, mm. we're hardwired to want it, but we shouldn't want it. Okay. And then the church, a lot of times is telling people as they get older that little C church. Okay. So that whole religion industry is telling people, well, you know, maybe God doesn't want it for you. So the mm. the so the the modern culture is saying you shouldn't want it and that that religious culture is saying you know maybe god doesn't want it for you right mm. and then family and friends that really care for you because it hasn't happened for you or you've made a lot of bad decisions in that they're just like hey you know why can't you just be content where you are mm. so mm. there's those three voices kind of yelling at people the older that they get of hey you shouldn't want it you know god doesn't want it for you and then you know why can't you just be satisfied you have a good life and so mm. I think that people run into all different versions of those lies and then they start talking themselves out of it. And mm. then, but you, but you are right as well. People who have made a lot of bad decisions based on heart trauma and hurt, um, and they've gotten into, you know, dysfunctional, disruptive, destructive relationships. Those people also have a lot of heart boxes to unpack in order to make room for love for sure. Yeah. Wow. Um, Lots of great comments here. I don't know if you get to read the comments, but they're here. Uh, someone said, my ship hasn't sailed. 51 years young. I'm rocking my best life. I believe my husband is coming soon. Yes. So, but listen, listen to that person. I can't see the comments. Yeah. Um, your ship hasn't sailed because you're the captain. So it's not going anywhere without you. But the second thing I want to tell you is that, you know, there's no waiting room. So your husband um, may be coming, but, you know, there's some onus on your part. Another thing that gets in the way of most people is that they don't, they confuse God's part with their part mm. and they buy into the waiting room uh, of God. Mm. God, heaven doesn't have any waiting rooms, friends. There's no waiting rooms. The, mm. the scripture in Psalms that says they that wait upon the Lord, that word actually means to expectantly prepare. And mm. so you're either waiting and, the, and then you're going to be waiting for a long time or you're preparing. Mm. And one of my favorite quotes of all time, Joseph, is Nelson Mandela. And he said, you will not prepare for what you don't really believe is going to happen. Wow. Wow. And so, you know, so we can declare stuff and we can say all the stuff we think we believe, you know, that we say we believe. But the truth is, is that if there's no action attached to those declarations and you don't really believe it. Mm. You don't. You're saying mm. it, but you don't really believe it because the proof of desire is preparation. Mm. The proof of so, belief is preparation. Yeah, that's so good. So let's let's talk about that for a second. So what is what are some elements of this preparation that someone can look at and know, okay, I'm moving that way. And also just one thing for all of you listening, I've got all of Jackie's links in the caption. So you can go in there at any time, check them out. And I'm gonna post them on here soon as well. For some of you, it might be really good, a good idea to connect and go deeper on this. Uh, but can we go into that a little bit? So the main elements of preparation, what would be some of those ones? 
Well, to me, the main elements of preparation, I've done this in my own life, is that we we partner, first of all, with the promise. Mm. And one of the ways that we partner with that promise, that invitation, is by allowing other people that are carrying that breakthrough to have, you know, to have that place in our lives. So, you know, part of, you know, part of that separation that we always talk about from the garden, we didn't just get separated from God, we got separated from each other. Romantically and non-romantically. What does that mean? That means everyone has that two-year-old's attitude of, I do it myself. You mm -hmm. know, you're two-year-old, you're trying to tie its shoes, you're trying to help it. It's just like, no, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. I'm do it. And that's the kind of attitude that we have. And so we can be massively failing in areas of our lives, but we refuse to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And then God forbid someone's charging for their amazing help because then mm -hmm. we have the poverty and scarcity orphan mindset of, oh, well, they should give it to me for free. Really? Mm -hmm. Because you have something super valuable to give to other people too. And guess mm -hmm. what? If everyone gives everybody else the super valuable thing, then we can all prosper. We can all live Deuteronomy 8.18 because mm. all of us are sharing what we have and and then you're you know you're you're getting for what you're giving and you're giving and that's just one big reciprocal situation there mm. and so the mm. very first thing that i would tell people is find someone who's successfully doing what it is that you want to do and then hire them to help you do it too mm. okay for all of you, and you know who you are, that are signing up for all of those emails from those single guys specifically out there that are trying to tell you how to catch a man, um, why aren't they caught? Why hasn't yeah. any woman caught them? Um, you might want to rethink those free emails and you might want to really begin to consider having someone who's doing what it is that you want to do help you do it as well. And that can be in every area, Joseph. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's that's a very good point that you just brought up because there was one guy on Instagram who's a massive following and I messaged him because I saw his you know his posts and stuff and I asked him, Hey, are you married? Are you but he wasn't. He wasn't in a relationship. So it was so interesting to me that you, you bring that up. So very, very important point, I think. It's a little bit it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine because I really, really hate for people to be taken advantage of. Like mm. I know I'm sure you do as well. Yep. Like, you know, I hate to see people get taken advantage of. And um, so it's like, look for, look for results, look for fruit. Okay, don't be, a lot of people have gifts, friends. Don't look for gifts, look for fruit. Mm. Is there fruit? A lot of people have gifts, they have a mouthpiece, they can talk, but is there mm. fruit of what they're saying? You know, the proof is in the pudding, as my grandma mm. used to say. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I, don't know what, I don't know what that means though. The proof is in the pudding. <laughs> you, it. you eat it, taste it, it's good. I, I guess, I'm not sure. <laughs> All of you, um, all you Southerners, tell us what that means, because we're not sure. <laughs> yeah. right, maybe, um, okay, so we started with the partner with the promise. Is there mm -hmm. any others that you can think of? Um, well, you know, if, if you really, if you really want it, then you, you need to, you need to admit it. You need to admit it. Mm. So, you know, hire a mentor, hire a coach. That's, that's my best advice. Um, Cause you know, like if you needed to do anything else in your life, you would do it, lose weight, you know, make more money, get debt free, whatever. Um, so definitely do that. But the other thing is that a lot of people, they don't have this because they are so afraid that they can't have it, that they won't admit they want it. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. They won't, mm -hmm. they won't admit yep. it to themselves. They won't admit it to God. They won't admit it to the people around them. In fact, they're so afraid to tell the people around them that they want this because they're afraid people are going to shut them down and say, oh, you shouldn't want that anymore. You yeah. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so admitting it. In fact, I make my students like come clean to their communities and their family and friends and say, hey, you know what? I really believe that um, I that God has a husband for me and that I want to get married again or for the first time, if that's the case. Um, so if you know anyone that I should meet, you know, may, let me know. Yeah. I mean, that there is going to mess with so many people who are listening right now. <laughs> so maybe we go into that because that's one of the questions is where do I meet? People, where do I meet these guys? Where do I meet these women? You know, um, what are your thoughts on that? Like, where, 
That first of all, they're they're forty nine percent of the population. If we're talking to the women, men are forty nine percent of the population. They're everywhere. They're everywhere that you are. They're at the grocery. They're at the dry cleaners. If you still go there, they're at the you know they're at you know a lot of people are like, well, there isn't any guys in my church. Well, you know, is that the only place that you go? Do you only go to church? You're mm. you're you know you're all over the place. They're all over the place too. You don't have to meet them at your church. And mm. so it isn't about where they are. It is about where are you in your heart? Because mm -hmm. if you're invisible because your heart hasn't, is not all in, you're not fully admitting that this can happen for you, then you're missing the love that's right in front of you. And that's what I help mm -hmm. people do. In my program, I help them get out of their own way, get out of God's way, admit that they want this because I truly believe Joseph in the six degrees of separation which is just saying, and some people know that as the six degrees to Kevin Bacon, it's a game that mm -hmm. just says mm -hmm. that, you know, every person is only six people away from knowing everyone in the world. And there's 7.6 mm -hmm. billion people in the world. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? And for those of you that are kingdom people and believers that are watching this, you're part of the biggest family in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you are connected to so many people all over the world. And so you may not know who your spirit mate is, but guess what? Someone that you know probably does, mm. you know? When I met my husband as neighbors, after we got to know each other, we realized that we had all kinds of mutual friends. And you know what else? I know this is gonna sound hooky spooky to some people, but two years into our marriage, cause we were, we were married in eight months or less. So from the time I yelled at him in the front yard to the time <laughs> I said I do was eight months. <laughs> wow. And four of those months was a romantic relationship and four of those months was just a neighbor relationship. So really four months and that was 15 years ago. So I think it's mm. going to work out. I think it's, I think it's mm. going to work out. Um, but, uh, two years into our marriage, we were moving and we were going through garage boxes and I found some VCR tapes of his min some ministry stuff. He used to be the youth pastor at a mega church and I was popping them in the VCR. That's if you guys don't know what that is, we'll tell you later. And mm. I was watching them and uh, one of them was this video that I had seen four years ago. So I had been married to him for two years. So I've known him for two years and eight months. A year before that, I was at this event at the church that he worked at, just visiting with a friend. And they had this punked video. That's like prank video where they prank yeah, people. Yeah. And he was the subject of the prank. And while I was watching that video, you know, a whole year and eight months before I ever met him. And then of course, you know, so many years into our marriage, um, he, I, I really felt like I knew him and I kept asking my friend that invited me, Hey, who is that guy? I really recognize him. I feel like I know him. I think we went to school together. I couldn't place him, but I knew that I had met him or seen him somewhere before. And mm. guess what? Fast forward, you know, a year, 18 months later, he was my husband and I wouldn't even recognize him until I saw that VCR tape two years into our marriage. Yeah. So wow. it's just crazy. It's crazy. So if we want God to play our matchmaker, we have to stop believing the scarcity mindset that there's no good men, there's no good women, there's no one who would love me. There's, you know, there's no one in my vicinity. Um, I have to, you know, I'd have to do this or that. So many people put all this pressure on themselves to go out and make it happen. Mm. All you have to do is admit you want it to happen, invite God to be your matchmaker, um, and then do whatever he mm. says. This is the theme of my life. Mm. You know, if he tells you wow. to, um, to, to go over here and do this, then do that. If he tells you to join mm. a program, then do that. If, you know, if he tells you to stop at Applebee's on the way home from work and go and sit at a table for one, then you do that. Yeah. I can't, you should hear the stories that I have, Joseph, of how people have met. <laughs> Can you tell us one? Can you tell us one? One amazing story. Oh my story. gosh. There's so many. Okay. Here's one. <laughs> so that, so this, this couple actually worked at the same company and they both knew this person that was getting married. And so they were both invited to the wedding. Now, in the pictures of the reception, you can literally see them dancing right near each other. And like the, the, the pictures of the dance floor, they're mm. right there. They're like, he's here and she's there and they don't meet. They don't meet at this wedding reception where there are several pictures where they're like just one little hair's breadth away from each other. 
Fast forward five months later at a company Christmas party, they meet each other through that same mutual friend that got, that got married, that they were at the wedding of, and then they look back and they see all the times that they were at, they were in the same meetings, they were at the same wedding, they were always in proximity to each other, but that moment at that Christmas party was when they finally were introduced and met face to face and yeah. they ended up getting married. So, yeah. I mean, you guys, you have no idea. And this is why, listen, be nice to everyone that you meet. Not that you're not nice, I'm sure you are, but be nice to everyone you meet because you don't know, you know, they might, they might be best friends with, their brother might be your spirit mate, their uncle, their dad. I know people who have fixed their fathers up with people that they've met places. Like, wow. you know, the waitress, the waitress at the restaurant, they're like, hey, you know, you should meet my dad. Here's another great one. This, now men are not really known to be matchmakers very often, but my friend's dad was um, sick in the hospital. He had some kidney stones. And he said to his nurse, you need to meet my son. While he was in mm -hmm. the hospital, he never does that. That's not like him. And, mm -hmm. and that nurse married his son. They got married. Wow. The, the dad, you know, if he wouldn't have had kidney stones that day, then <laughs> that would have never happened. You know? Man, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joseph, um, how, did, how did you meet your wife? Because you're always bragging about her. How did you meet her? <laughs> uh, at university, I turned around and said hello to her. That's how we met. At university? Um, at university, we both happened to switch our degrees at the same time, so we happened to be in the same class. And uh, turned around, said hello, and we did a tutorial together. Uh, that time, I wasn't with the Lord, so she would pray that I'd meet, meet Jesus, and then I met him. Wow. So she was shocked that I changed so much, you know? So Isn't I get it. Amazing? I get it. Yeah. Yeah. S super blessed. I get, I get it. And there's so many things you're saying are so good, but guys, this is too deep to go into in one podcast. I mean, we've for just sure. spoken for 52 minutes. It's gone so fast. This has been yeah. amazing. And um, so I recommend you connect with Jackie and we're going to talk about that soon, but just a couple of things here. So online dating, what are your thoughts on that? When people, you know, go on these apps and Okay. Listen, it's, you know, um, it's, it can be, if you, if you have an unhealthy heart, online dating is like swimming with the sharks. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're not going to meet Prince Charming. You're going to meet Prince Alarming nine times out of 10. That's what's going to happen. Okay. But you know, it's about having a healthy heart. It's not about being in the right time at the right place. It's about being in the God place at the right time with the right heart. That is what it's really about. And I know so many couples that met online. So I know we hear mm. horror stories about scammers and trolls and catfishing and all of those things, but those things also happen when people are trying to do things in their own strength. When, um, you know, I've had, I had a really unfortunate thing happen with a lady that I met um, and she, you know, she was so embarrassed to tell anyone, but she told me, you know, she got taken for so much money on an online mm. dating scam. And this woman's in her fifties. Um, she got so, she got taken for so much money that she had to file for bankruptcy. Mm. And you know what, but she admitted to me, she said, I knew that the person wasn't true. She said, but I wanted to believe the fantasy so much. I wanted someone to love me so much. I wanted the attention so much that mm. I was just ignoring all of the red flags. Mm. And so that obviously is not the right heart to be on those very precarious, you know, and it doesn't even have to happen on an app. It can happen anywhere if you have that kind of mindset, right? Mm. So I, I like I like technology playing matchmaker if if God is the one working through the technology to play matchmaker and you're allowing him to. Mm. Mm. There you go. That's a good one. I guess another good subject here quickly is culture and how every nation has its own culture, you know, and there are some individualistic cultures and then some very collectivist cultures. Like, for example, if if you were to do some of what you're saying in an Indian context it would go crazy very fast you know in the sense that every uncle and auntie and their cousin's dog will now bring you a match you know um what are your thoughts in terms of culture and how you navigate some of that well you know i love i love the history of the matchmaker i believe that you know jeremiah 6 16 says that the ancient of days has ancient ways 
Mm. And so if we will plug back into those ancient ways, and that's really what Married in 12 Months or Less is about. It's about harnessing the power of community. It's about, you know, obviously heart healing, but it's also about utilizing the community that we're in because a lot of times people that love us know us better than we know ourselves. Mm. And, and just really allowing God to play matchmaker through those human outlets. And so I will tell you that the Indian culture obviously has been really big on matchmaking. Uh, matchmaking is really big. And mm. I got a I got a message from a very, um, you know, uh, just well to do uh, Indian man that said to me that he's in India, he said, I believe that God has highlighted you to be my my son's matchmaker. And I want to tell you, I deleted that so fast as spam. I'm like, spam, you know, oh, that's that's a scam. That's spam. Yeah. And yeah. it and it kept coming back. This man kept reaching out to me, and wow. I was just like, "Ugh, spam." And then finally, one of my friends that graduated from Oral Roberts University, she contacted me. She said, "Hey," she said, "One of my friends, in, you know, in Dubai has been trying to reach you <laughs> to be a matchmaker for their son." Yeah. She said, "I gave yeah. them your name, and they said that they can't get a hold of you." And so I actually had the opportunity to to be to to play matchmaker for that family and it was so wow. fun um so so i want to say that too <laughs> that even though this is a program and it's a community of men and women and so many people are meeting and supernatural ways um just because of the anointing that this thing carries i also do get to introduce people myself and i introduce dozens of people every month and some mm. of those people have gone on to be in serious um you know marriage minded relationships and getting married mm. and so exciting wow. so so i do get to play matchmaker myself still as well which i love yeah i mean i love it um before we just <laughs> go over some last things i remember watching the movie hitch you remember that movie hitch what i i i like yes yes i <laughs> i watched I love, that movie yeah and i was good. like i want to do that I, I would love to be that guy, that <laughs> dream, you know, and yeah. I remember speaking to the Lord about this many times, uh, but I didn't realize that I was going to hitch people to their purpose, which is what I'm doing, you know. I love that. Uh, so, but, you, but know what's I, so, I, yep. you know what, you know, what's so great about that movie is that, you know, Will Smith's character doesn't actually introduce those guys. The, the guys mm -hmm. already really, really love those women. But mm -hmm. they just they're not confident, Joseph. That's they don't right. believe that that person could love them back. And, um, and so, you know, that's what you're doing as well. You're actually helping people to believe that, you know, that they have something that this world needs, that they have something mm. to offer that, you know, no one else can offer, you know, that they're mm. important. And so that's really powerful. That's awesome. So good. Hey, uh, just one last thing here from, from my end that I want to ask is how does someone know that they have a healed heart? They've done the heart work. How would they know? What are some characteristics or attributes that they now are feeling or walking in that they know? You know what? I've done I've done this heart work. Well, you know, first of all, all of us are always going to be doing the heart work. You know, this this mm. this culture that we live in wants to continually put brokenness on us, rejection, you know, abandonment, separation. I mean, we're gonna be living in a world full of broken people for the rest of our lives, mm. right? And so the way that you know that your heart is healing is that, and for every person it's gonna be different, is if you just don't react the same way that you used to. Like, mm. you know, the trigger comes, but there's not an explosion. You know, you mm -hmm. don't immediately just gravitate towards self-deprecation or, you know, people pleasing, whatever it is that you really struggled in that you know is an unhealthy behavior. When you start to, you know, process that instead of just having that knee-jerk reaction, you begin to process with God, okay, I feel this way, but why do I feel this way? I'm angry right now, but why am I angry? Why am mm. I offended? You invite you know, the spirit into that moment to really show you the why behind the what, and that's how you know that you're beginning to be awakened, that you're actualized, because now you're not just allowing your feelings to run away with you, you're feeling them, but you're feeling them to heal them. So we say, mm. feel the feels to heal the feels. And so you're feeling them a hundred percent. You're not, cause I know a lot of like Christianity tells you to deny negative feelings. I'm That's like, right. feel it all people mm -hmm. feel it, mm -hmm. but also ask yourself, why do I feel it? So you can get to the deeper root and healing of that. And so mm -hmm. if you're willing to do that and be self-aware, then you definitely have a, a healed, a he more healed heart. Love it. Wow. Come on. Hey, I know you guys enjoyed this and this was awesome. It's gone so quick. Like this hour has just flown by. 
Um, I just want to thank you again. This has been amazing, and I love the work you're doing. It's so needed. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to share some of your links, and maybe can you just speak to people on how they can connect with you and some of the options that they have? Sure. You can find me on Instagram at Jackie Dorman Official. That, that's Dorman with one O. It's Dorman like Norman. So Jackie Dorman Official. You'll see the link there. The same on Facebook at Jackie Dorman Official. You can find me at JackieDorman.com. You can find me at LoveStoriesPlural.com um, pretty soon. Uh, I actually have a new book coming out, Joseph. It's, um, it's being published by Forefront Books, and it is coming out on January 18th. The pre-sale will start at the end of oh. October. It's called Married in 12 Months or Less, Reclaim Your Love Life, Heal Your Heart, and uh, what is the rest of it? Reclaim Your Love Life, Heal Your Heart, and Unlock the Secret to Finding Your Spirit Mate. <laughs> Come on. Hey, um, have you got a couple more minutes? Can I ask you one more question? I, I yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, so... You coming into this space would have taken courage, right? There's no one really, you're pioneering something really. And that's a big promise, like married in 12 months or less, but you know, it's a God promise. Can you share maybe some things that you had to walk through to step into this assignment and own it? Were there moments like that? Um, no, absolutely. I, you know, listen, you can argue with God. Just don't say no. I totally argue with God about things. I'm like, oh, God, I'm just going to get so much flack. I'm going to get trolled over this name. You know, I just, I listen, I've been in branding long enough. And trust me, I got massively trolled. And so, mm. you know, I had to just be willing to take one for the team. I knew that it's what the reason why it's so ostentatious and in your face is because mm. God wants people to own it. That's why the title is that. He wants them mm. to own it. Because a lot of people are like, okay, well, yeah, maybe, maybe it can happen. Maybe somewhere down the line when God wants it for me, you know, kind of thing. Instead of like married in 12 months or less, you know. <laughs> and so, so yeah, that was really difficult for me because, you know, I'm the face of that. I got to put myself out there and take the flack for it, right? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, you're when you're doing heart work stuff with people, people are hurting. And so hurting people hurt people. And, mm. but healed people heal people. And we don't tell that story often enough. And so mm. I had to deal with all of my insecurities because I'm sure you know this, but when you do any type of, um, you know, assignment from heaven, it is tailor made to continue to work on you in the area mm. that you need work. Mm. And so, um, I've had to come through so much heart work. You know, every time I put myself out there, I'm doing deeper and higher levels of heart work. Um, I had to financially sacrifice. As you know, you have to, you know, a lot of people, they really want something, but they're not willing to invest in themselves, Joseph. Mm. They have to invest in themselves. Mm. Okay. If you really want it and you believe that God has told you that you can have it, then you got to get some skin in the game. Mm. You know, so I've had to invest so much uh, of my time and energy. Basically, if this is a breakfast, I'm the pig. I'm, I'm all in. I'm not the chicken mm. that's just donating the eggs. I'm all in, mm. right? Mm. Mm. And David and I packed up a U-Haul and drove to Austin, Texas with no place to live, no reason to be here, nothing. God just said, wow. go to Austin. And actually, he didn't just say go to Austin. He said, go now. Like he gave mm. us a specific weekend to move. It was Passover 2019 and God said, go. And so within 24 hours of being in the city, we had a place to live and we had a, um, a reason to be here. Like, and if we would have come three weeks later or two weeks before that, that, that opportunity would not have existed. And so mm. you just have to step out. And if you, if you step out and nothing happens, then take another step and take mm. another step. And just trust that God will, you know, direct you as you're walking and as you're moving. God directs people that are moving. And so it's really important that we do that. So good. I mean, I got so much more I could talk to you about. This has been <laughs> fantastic. And I think we vibe on a great level. But yes. I just want to thank you. I honor you, honor your journey, honor what you're thank doing. You. And uh, this is awesome for the body. I also honor David. Uh, yes. Mr. Got yelled at to Mr. Married in eight months. Congratulations, David. Yes. And um, yeah, I look forward to maybe doing this again before your book comes out. That would be awesome. For sure. I'd and, love to. Um, yeah. Any yeah. last words? Any last words for people before we, we go? 
I just want to tell everyone that's listening, if you have a desire to be married, that is God's maturity plan for you. And that spirit mate, not that soul mate, that spirit mate is the missing piece of why you never get any further in the things that you want to do with your life. And so you, you need that person. God wants that person for you. And so go ahead and own it confess it. When you get off here, just tell God, okay, you know what? I surrender. I want it. I'm admitting it. I'm not going to, I'm no longer just going to pretend that I don't want it in case it doesn't happen to avoid disappointment. Just go ahead and admit it. And I promise you something will begin to shift. If you give God permission to, to bring it, things will begin to change for you in that area. So I just really want to encourage people to do that. Awesome. Well, there you go, guys. Make sure you connect with Jackie. I'm sure you had a great time. Share this around. There'll be a lot of people, a lot of believers that need to listen to this and uh, start to move in this, you know, because there is, this is an area of a lot of pain, a lot of, uh, a lot of hurt, and it's usually hidden. It's usually, it keeps people isolated. It usually draws people away, which is not how the kingdom works. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Jackie, you can stay with me, but everyone else, we're going to say goodbye. Have a good Bye, afternoon. everybody. Faith and patience. Faith and patience. Patience means allow it to happen. Stay the same. Stay persistent. Keep going. Faith, know that it can happen at any moment. Get excited because it can happen at any moment. You are so close. Don't quit now. Keep pushing. You got this.